Welcome to Rogue Trader. Please read the disclaimer and remember that prices can go down as well as up. Frontier Developments PLC. I thought I'd take a look at Frontier Developments as a potential Corona pick. By Corona pick, that's a stock which hasn't been damaged by the recent shutdown in the UK due to the Wuhan virus, and which also in coming months and years is unlikely to have been affected by any secondary effects from this shutdown. Frontier Development are the UK's largest video game producer and publisher. They launch large video, video game franchises designed for long-term addiction and multi-year revenues. Their CEO, David Braben, is quite famous for being the creator, along with another guy, of this game called Elite, which came out in 1984. And it really was quite revolutionary. Um, it was like the first ever 3D game and uh, had all kinds of uh, limitless gameplay in it, which made it completely unlike the other games at the time, which was stuff like Donkey Kong and that kind of stuff, Pac-Man and that kind of stuff. So it really was um, a revolutionary game. So they currently have four main games that they sell. And there's an interesting one that's, on, that's in the pipeline. Um, so Elite Dangerous was their first game they released themselves and this is a massive a massive uh, space game with loads of spaceships and shooting everyone up and there's also trading elements and all kinds of uh, interesting things they do but um, it's a game where people tend to play it for hours and hours on end and they get the money from them from selling them content in the game. So things like, you know, your design of your spaceship or the, the paint coat on your spaceship and uh, this kind of thing. So they, and I think they sell advertising in there and all this kind of stuff. So it's um, a game that gives them a good, um, a good reliable kind of source of income. After Elite Dangerous, they then released Planet, Planet Coaster now, before when they were working for other people, they used to make a theme park and games like this that you might be familiar with. And um, basically what they did is they pretty much just copied all the same expertise they had already to create this Planet Coaster game. But because it used this uh, Cobra engine, games engine, the same which they developed for Elite Dangerous, it had much greater graphics. And... Um, lots more kind of interactivity in it and stuff. So it was quite successful. That's still running. And then they they then re, more recently came out with Jurassic World Evolution. And Jurassic World Evolution is kind of the same as Planet Coaster. They've almost kind of copied and pasted it, but they added instead of a, around the kind of theme park things, they have the dinosaur world. And then they, they went into quite a lot of detail with how good the graphics were, the dinosaurs and stuff. It, I mean, it didn't look all that amazing to me, to be honest, when I had a look at it. Uh, but it's, um, it certainly uh, made them lots of money. And then after Jurassic World Evolution, only in the beginning of this year did they bring out um, Planet Zoo. Now, interestingly... Planet Zoo is almost the same as Jurassic World Evolution, and it's kind of like a build-your-own-game park. However, this time, they've got zoo animals instead of dinosaurs. But obviously, they've got all the, uh, the structure there, so why not? And this game seems to be getting really good reviews. If you go and look on YouTube and stuff, you can see um, how people seem to like it. And um, it's a game which seems to be popular with women as well. So uh, female gamers seem to be, seem to find this game appealing. And uh, there's obviously a lot more female gamers these days. It's not like it used to be before where only guys play computer games. So then um, these are their only four games they have at the moment. And then coming up, they've got this uh, Formula One deal. So Formula One Racing have signed a deal with Frontier to be their, they'll be the official um, makers of the game for Formula One. 
So obviously this will should make lots of money. Um, I don't, that won't happen until 2013. But um, uh, what I find interesting about it is the dynamics and the AI and stuff and the programming you need for controlling a spaceship are kind of similar to uh, controlling a race car. In fact, easier with a race car because you're only going in two dimensions, not three dimensions. So this same trend of making money from um, regurgitating their existing expertise and invest and uh, R and D in particular, in typical particular software problems and graphic problems. It's, I see how they've done exactly the same here, um, transport transporting part of the the um, elite game engine into this Formula One game. Um, and the the thing with this is, um, you know, it should be quite easy for them to do the dynamics and AI and all this, making it an exciting race uh, experience. Uh, that should be quite easy for them after Elite. Uh, but of course, with the F1 sponsorship, it should be a real blockbuster. So to take a look at their history over the last five years, the first thing to mention is that looking at their annual reports, They've got a very impressive um, history of making increasing amounts of revenue each year. Their net income increased uh, to 8 million and then now up to 19 million in uh, 2019. And at the same time, they've been stacking up the cash. They had 14 million in 2015 and then that rate went up to 16 to 31. And they've now got about 41 grand in the bank. Um, so, so it's quite impressive. They've been very, they've been fit. They're kind of steady, conser fairly kind of conservative. They, when you look at the game, how they develop new games, they seem to take the the research, you know, the research and uh, coding specific to certain functions and um, problems in their earlier games, and then port them into the the newer games. So they've kind of got a lot out of what they've had. You know, they've been very kind of resourceful. And at the same time, their games have impressed people with the graphics and the gameplay. So they've got a consistent record with every release. Um, and that's then reflected in their sales. Um, so they've got a good, um, they kind of did it very steadily. I'm I'm so impressed with how... They they stack they stack cash in the bank rather than take risks or try and think too big, and then now five years on they're kind of in a in a position now where they are extend expanding in a kind of limited way, um, with the employment of another 140 people, and so it makes them a kind of I think it makes them quite a credible growth story as well as being a, a defensive stock for these kind of times. Um, the, uh, they launched Elite Dangerous in 2015. Then uh, Planet Coaster was 2016. Uh, then, uh, then the share price ramped up massively when the, the company Tencent invested 18 million into them. They bought, they, they issued at the equivalent of 10% of their shares and sold them to Tencent for 18 million. Now, Tencent are a Chinese company and um, they're actually the largest, one of the largest software developers and uh, software publishers in China. So the idea is, is that this then allows, it gives frontier developments a nice convenient way to be able to market in China. And that's the main reason why we had this massive increase in share price. They then launched uh, Jurassic World Evolution in 2018. And uh, then the price has kind of just stabilized or it's been, you know, kind of sideways since then, um, even though their net income has increased to 19 million. Uh, then, uh, it just in December, they launched Planet Zoo, 
which is their latest game, and that that seems to be selling well. And then more recently, when the uh, when we had the Wuhan virus crash, their their share price drop it wasn't so bad as you'd kind of expect from a defensive stock um whereas the FTSE dropped down to about 35 percent down in the same time period frontier developments only dropped down about 15 percent so yes so um their share price did quite you know it act it behaved like a defensive stock and of course, um, and actually, I can say that the number of people playing their games has in increased by about 30% um, during the lockdown period. Um, and then just recently, they announced that they were going to do um, a new kind of revenue stream, which is called Frontier Publishing. And they have two deals when I did this chart, but actually now it's five deals and um, announced where they're going to be selling other people's games as well as selling their own games. Um, and that won't kick off, though, for a few years. And then in 2023, let's just double check that, you know, 2022, sorry. So in 2022, they've got, they're going to start this big deal with uh, Formula One racing. And uh, this was announced only about a month or so ago. So yeah, so they are you know looking at the uh, the incre increase in revenues and the cash in the bank, and looking at this story here, they've got a, a story of building on what they have in a kind of robust way, and they're starting to look um, really quite credible as a a company that could really could grow quite significantly. Um, so then like really then the focus now then comes down to um how much how are their games selling and what's the kind of roadmap in the next couple of years so we know we've got like in 2022 this four-year f1 deal which is going to make them mega bucks i mean you know it's going to make them mega bucks um so there's also um, there's also uh, another in-house franchise they're saying which will be around 2022 and then they've got these publishing deals sort of coming in but the kind of the problem is is that although we know they're doing amazing up to now so that we know they'll be making money then but the question for me now is what about in between now and 2022 so I thought I'd take a bit of a deeper look at their sales. So you can see here they, that um, Elite Dangerous came out. Uh, their their ratings, by the way, when you look at their look at their ratings, these are their Steam ratings, are, are very high. You know they're high compared with a lot of other games. So that just that's kind of evidence that they produce good products. Um, but Elite Dangerous, um, they started out in December 2015. And what was interesting is, almost to my surprise really, um, the amount of players has stayed steady uh, from this time. In fact, in the recent um, rush, we had like a 20 to 30% increase in players uh, recently because of the corona lockdown it's actually increased now up to 8,000 players per day um, so this game is you know cons consistently over a long period of time um, bringing in money of people who buy content um, in the game and then also um, they're going to do a space legs update in 2021 that's not the official name uh, the guys within the uh, community, um, having you know, I've been watching a few YouTube videos to try and learn about this game, and apparently um, there's a new feature they call Space Legs, where basically everyone will be able to run around shooting each other rather than just being in the spaceships, and this is really highly anticipated from what I can make out. 
So, and also when they do this, you're going to have to buy the game again to have that feature. So, um, so they'll get a big in one-off income from game sales from basically selling the game again to everyone, but with this new feature. Plus then, you know, we can expect these numbers and then the money from the content they sell within the game to uh, continue. Um, Planet Coaster, um, this then is, um, was there, you know, you build a theme park basically. And the numbers kind of, you know, um, they stayed, you know, quite impressive that there's still 3,500 people playing it. Um, but I don't think they make much money, or I don't think they can make much money from reselling expansion packs and stuff. Um, so that's not so significant. Um, then Jurassic World Evolution, um, this... Again, you know, I'm not sure how much more money they've made loads out of this, by the way. Um, but I'm not sure they'll make much more money running into the next few months. But then Planet Planet Zoo. Um, now they've sold half a million units in only the first few weeks, so we don't know how much they've sold in the last month, say. But it's got to be as much uh, you know it's got to be a million or something you'd think would be a good educated guess just from looking at this number and then knowing when these numbers came out after the launch um uh when i've looked they've got around eight thousand players at the moment and uh so so that does seem like they're going to make a good good, good bill of money but We've still kind of got this gap, you know. Um, I've got here the uh, the the analyst estimates. They're going to have a revenue of 69 million in 2020, 86 million in 2021, and then 134 million in 2022. When of course you see some of this kicking in. But really, are the sales from these going to carry us through 2021? So fortunately, you can actually go on Steam, which is one of the main platforms that, where they sell their games, and you can actually check how many people are actually playing the game every day. So um, this is obviously a way of trying to, you know, suss out how how um, how much are they really going to be? Is are the sales really going to carry through? Um, and so you can download the raw data. So I did this. And here is a graph of how many people have been playing each game since 2015. So um, I've also here put down some kind of back of a fag packet estimations of how much they made. So I know their sales. And from looking at Steam, I can see how much in Swiss francs they um, have been selling the games for so you can see that um, their home titles um, they you know their planet coaster and and planet zoo you know when they release them they make a good whack when they release them and um, so you know that is uh, pretty impressive and um, so you know but now we're into uh, we're talking here about 2021 when they aren't releasing any new games but then how much money are they getting from um, selling expansion packs and stuff well um, the first thing from this graph is you can really can see that elite dangerous um, you know are if anything increasing their using so they've got this low user base and they've managed to maintain that for five years. So it seems quite reasonable that that will keep steady the next couple of years, particularly with this space legs thing that they're launching. Um, you know, so when I was here, I wasn't quite so sure. And then when I got the actual numbers, uh, that was quite encouraging. Planet Coaster, uh, so if I go down now into the last couple of years, um, 
so planet coaster you can see that they had a, a you know to be honest a pretty pathetic pump when they did an expansion pack but you know they're around three thousand so it's some income it helps but not that impressive um jurassic park that was obviously that they made more money from that than anything it was a big ticket brand um you know they released it in conjunction with the jurassic park movie but then actually not that many people bother to play it anymore it's interesting you get a massive spike with all the hype of the movie but then it's actually quite a crap game and then no one plays it but because just because of the hype they make more money from that it's quite interesting but um yeah but so that i'm not too fussed about um then however their yeah then their their latest game planet zoo looking at this steam which I, I didn't have this information so much from their interim report and at this point when i was here um just doing the um the main timelines um they really have they really are a lot of people playing this game and it's now there's now more people playing this or as many people playing this as they, they are playing elite dangerous so that is quite encouraging and also there's the corona bump um i say 20 percent here but actually with um with planet zoo there's actually in the last month there was 30 percent more people uh playing this game because of the corona lockdown than before and the other games there was a 20 percent bump as well so that gives them a nice little head start for the next for this kind of gap in 2021 uh so yeah i'll just show you on here um down here you see you can see each month um and here you can see the gap so this this game is oh this game's elite dangerous and there's a 30 percent 30 percent bump in the last month because everyone's stuck in lockdown so yeah so going into these um getting this data looking at these numbers they certainly um although i wouldn't say they make me totally crazy um the next year they certainly make these numbers plausible that the analysts are telling us that they will make 69 million and then 86 million so checking out that these games haven't totally died but there's still stuff going on that makes me feel confident in those numbers biding us through to uh when they release the formula one race games so i am very impressed so far there's a really good story i've looked at the games and how they're progressing and it seems plausible that they're going to meet the analyst targets before these uh, this new deal comes in with the formula one in uh, 2022 so now it's time to have a look at the numbers and uh looking at the profit and loss the income is i mean this is beautiful we've got the income 10 23 37 90 so a really lovely progression of income all based off revenue no complications it's beautiful then the expenditure side and this is it increases obviously in line with their sales you can see their cost of sales uh, going up in line with the increased revenue but it's never out of control even when they're making mega bucks like 90 million their operating um profit is still pretty high you know their expenditure isn't that much more um and uh so they've still now you know they've got now some serious r d expenditure costs um so which hopefully can be a kind of multiplier into making ever more amazing games making more money um but this increase in r d isn't that out of proportion with their increase in income 
So this is, you know, this is a quite a nice um, ramp up, quite a nice story so far in terms of their operating profit through time. Um, and I guess um, just something to look out for in the future will be just keeping an eye on these admin expenses uh, that things don't start getting out of control in their R&D expenses. But up to now, it's beautiful. And um, yeah, so you can see here how how impressive their net, net income growth has been. So assets and debt, and this is just as nice to look at as the profit and loss. In short, their assets go up loads every year and they don't have any debt so <laughs> so you just gotta love it you know i like it so um going into their assets and i i'm always a little bit suspicious of intangible assets um but actually most of their assets are, are current assets or half are current assets in fact most of half of the assets are cash cash in the bank so that's beautiful. Um, and then their long term assets. OK, so there's a lot of intangibles. I looked into that and it's mainly things like their software tools and their game engine, uh, which, they, which they call Cobra. And then their brands that they have attached to some of their games like, you know, Jurassic World, you know, that's an intangible asset. The, you know, the right to uh, be selling the Jurassic World game. But despite the intangibles, you know, um, you know, in fact, even if you took away the tangibles, a real nice asset, you know, real nice net assets. Um, the, yeah, the net, net assets are 72 million. Really impressive over this period of time, how that's built up. Um, and then in the debt, there is no long term debt no you know no loans with any banks or anything exactly how i like it no debt at all and the only short term debt they have is account account payables which is fairly reasonable um and then equity now the thing is equity is the one thing that i'm weakest at i am not really uh very good when it comes to working out how well is a company valued based on its equity um it's something i'm definitely quite weak on and, and i'm trying to learn about but um they're looking at their equity that just goes up um i looked into it and their share capital e equity jumped up directly because of their um when they sold they issued 18 million pounds worth of shares and uh, sold them to uh, 10 cents so that was that explains this and that's obviously a great reason for the uh for this part of their equity to go up um and then the only other significant thing is retained er earnings um so you know this is my weak spot but it looks good from what i can tell so in doing the research over the last five years one thing I noticed was that Wendy Ivan Braben, who's basically David Braben's wife, she sold fifty million pounds worth of shares only in November. Now this was actually a bit of a shock to me. Um, it just looked really odd. What's going on here? So the backstory of this company is very encouraging, as are the financials. And I did research into the how many people are actually playing these games and it all tied up reasonably with the current estimates so um i really do find that these are a good defensive corona pick this is a stock which um, they've benefit benefited from everyone being in lockdown by increased sales and you d I don't expect them to be affected by negative impact of coronavirus, even in the long term, either. So I really do now have these as one of my corona picks. 
the timing will be to buy them early so i'm going to be um purchasing some corona pick shares in the next month or so and um these are definitely going to be within that short list uh so for our financials uh, once i've bought them i'll be planning to keep them for five or ten years um or basically until they go massive and uh you know start they kind of change into a kind of more mature company um but but um in terms of their financials um i will keep an eye on if their estimates are being met and then um when we get 2020 to 2025 we want to see the we want to see their revenues going above 100 million as vindication that they are actually growing into a a large games publisher um who are making money from uh developing a good strong pipeline of games and licensing other people's games um so in terms of the charts um because i established them as a corona pick it's kind of sooner rather than later um but looking at the uh s p 500 which i'm using as my kind of general uh corona guide um we you know it could be that worst case was back in a 22nd of march and we're going up from there um but just in case we're not just in case we do go down again um i had noticed this little dip recently um i think i'm oh it's worth waiting at least a week um because we've got um non farm payroll numbers coming out only on april the third so it's worth waiting for that just to see if there's if new uh, us unemployment does create a bit of a crash down and then whether it does or doesn't um you know the next couple of weeks will be uh the time to buy um once we've just uh, allowed another week just because it happens to be a particularly um new sensitive moment um okay so risks to to monitor once buying them the main one will be it's important that dave brabham and other senior leaders stay at the company they've done such a good job that the model only works as long as they stay there which could happen for example if the company gets taken over aggressively by another company or if there's some kind of bust up um another risk is it's, it's important to keep an eye on the games franchise um these games have all sold well they've been good games we all with the same cobra uh engine but you need to keep an eye out in future that they don't start producing games that are turds because that would show that the winning team formula they've got now they'd somehow lost during scale up um the elite dangerous space legs launch um is something to look at because that needs to be popular with the current user base for us to get the revenue that we're counting on through around 2021 um i'll also be keeping an eye on the cash burn r d and admin costs to make sure that the what i really like about them historically um they maintain this they maintain this so that's something to keep a look at and um finally their their cobra games engine um it's important that this can be scaled in the future to match their competitors and the mmorg functionality so when they bring out new games if there's any signs that that the cobra game engine can't keep up anymore can't be scaled and it's like they need a whole damn new games engine um that that's something as well to keep an eye on so this um this then concludes my analysis of frontier developments